If someone were to come up to you and ask, who are you? How would you respond? Now think about this for a moment. Who are you? And so in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 to 35, in the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, year B, Jesus turns to his disciples and asks, Who do people say that I am? Now notice their response. After this question, Jesus then asked them specifically, Now, who do you say that I am? And these two questions are very important. You see, the first gives a description of who Jesus is. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is the miracle worker, a good shepherd, a great prophet. But then the second question is a very personal response, and it's a very personal uh, reflection as well. Who is Jesus Christ to you, to you in a, in a personally? You see, those who have been following my reflections on YouTube know that we have discussed numerous times about beings in relation, or in other words, relationships between people. For example, the relationship between parents and children, or between relatives, you know, aunts, uncles, etc., and then the relationship between close friends as well. Now, the first question to consider when we think about this is, who am I? And then we also think, who is that person? Who is that person to me? Is that person a friend? Is that person a relative, a parent? You see, we use descriptive words to describe who that particular person is to us. So then in the gospel reading for this Sunday, we see Peter's confession about who Jesus is. Peter proclaims that Jesus is indeed the Christ, that is, the Messiah. So then let's examine this passage further. And here, I'd like to share three important points for us to examine further. And I also invite you to just take a quick moment to remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, to receive weekly scriptural reflections on faith. And if you find them helpful, please be sure to share them with others. You know, for this one in particular, I invite all of you to listen attentively to this gospel reflection because there's a lot of key information here that will help us to truly understand what this passage is all about. So then, let's get started. Point number one, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? All right, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? Now, how do the respond, disciples respond? All right? Uh, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. Hmm. Think about it. Who do people say that I am? Right? St. John the Baptist is considered a great saint, a great prophet by many. And so it's natural that his name comes up. Elijah is also the same. And one of the interesting things about Elijah was that he is assumed into heaven. And so perhaps some people think Elijah has returned. Still others think that Jesus is one of the great prophets because he was able to perform miracles and do many things. And so then, as mentioned, beings in relation, you see, people use what they know. These prophets, they know John the Baptist, they know Elijah, they know the other prophets. And so by analogy, they use them to compare Jesus to. But then as we see clearly in the verses that follow, Jesus is more than just a prophet. So then after asking the disciples to explain, you know, who others have said about him, right? Who do people say that I am? Jesus turns to his disciples then and asks, who do you say that I am? All right, who do you say that I am? And so then the first part of the question is, who do people say that I am? You know, a descriptive question. But then the second part is, who do you say that I am? Which is a very personal response. Now, think about this. The disciples have been with Jesus for some time. They have been traveling with him. They have witnessed his miracles. They have seen great wonders. So then who is Jesus to them? 
Now, besides all the descriptive, you know, saints and etc., take a look at Peter's response. He states, you are the Christ. You are the Christos, Christus, the son of the living God. Wow. How did Peter come to this? You see, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 17, this point is made clear. Here's what it says. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. In other words, Peter is not only able to come to this conclusion uh, by himself, right? He is only able to do so through revelation. You see, only in realizing that it is through God himself revealing this to Peter that he comes to understand, to see, to acknowledge, to accept that Jesus is a Messiah, the Son of the living God. So then the key question is this, how is Peter able to come to this proclamation? And the answer is simple, it's through faith. That's the key word. Only through faith is Peter able to realize that Jesus is the Christ, which then leads us to point number two. You see, the reference to the passion of Christ. In fact, starting in verse 31, notice Jesus talks about his suffering and death. Here's what he says. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and, on, and rise after three days. Notice how this comes right after Peter's confession of Jesus as the Christ. So Peter says, you are the Christ, the Messiah. Now, how does this connect right, with um, what we just mentioned with the passion of Christ here? You see, the answer is pretty clear. Jesus is clearly the Messiah, the Savior, but he is not the Savior people think about. He is not like King David who has power and authority and go and conquer and liberate people. No, not in the worldly sense. Jesus is the true king who comes to save all people from sin and death. How? By the mystery of the cross, by his passion and death. God died, but God rose on the third day. And it is the resurrection that brings salvation to all people. And it is the glory of the cross that Jesus is truly the Christ, the son of the living God. This is the main point for us to understand. Which then brings us to the third and final point in this reflection I'd like to share here, and it's this. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Now, how would you answer this question? Well, on the surface level, we can say that Jesus is a teacher. Jesus is a prophet, a miracle worker, a great and inspirational preacher. But as we can see, Jesus is much more than all these descriptive words, you know, descriptive words we just mentioned here. So then who is Jesus to you, to you personally? A friend, a good teacher, a savior? Think about how you would answer this question because the answer lies not only in the words we say, but in the action. In other words, how we live out our life here in this world, in the here and now. Because if Jesus is the Messiah, if Jesus is the savior, then our response is to become his disciples to follow him which is why the final two verses in this gospel reading beautifully captures this point here's what it says jesus summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself take up his cross and follow me for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. Friends, Jesus invites us a journey with him. He invites us to allow him to enter into our life every day. The question is this, are we willing to allow Christ to enter our life? May God bless you.